Tonight on Wild Chicago, we learn some secrets to playing pinball at the Bally Williams factory. The most popular pinball game in the world is made right here on California Avenue. And when these folks aren't making games, they're playing them. Hi, what is your name? Roger Sharp. Roger. Is, is there a Mr. Williams or a Mr. Bally? Or... Yeah, there once was. Uh, Harry Williams. Yeah. Today you're actually going to be seeing Adam's family. How many people work? Uh, you got working here? Uh, we have uh, literally about 1,500 here, but about 3,000 employees in three different facilities. And here's yeah. one of our most famous employees, Steve Kordak, old timer. Now, Steve, you... how, how old are you? <laughs> I'll be 81 this December. Do you still play pinball? Oh, hell yes, I love it. What we do with this particular play field is we put it into this hydraulic press. And this hydraulic press marks the top of the play field and the bottom of the play field so that the people on the assembly line know where to put the posts, the rubber ring, anything that goes on this game is marked off so they can place it in here. What, why is it that the ball always seems to go right down the middle between the flippers? I don't know. Oh, it's a magnet. I don't know. What are you doing here, sir? <laughs> now, you guys designed this Adams Family game. That's correct. We headed the design group. Why are the scores always so darn high? It, it seems like pinball, you know, why not a football score like 27 to 10 or something? Um, we've had pretty continual score inflation, and it's really the players feel like they're getting a little better, a little better every game. And every, every... But still, it's frustrating when you get 22 million points and you're still, like, not in the top 10, you know? What do you think of the rock musical Tommy? Was it realistic? Yes. Is there a pinball wizard? Have you ever met one? No. You always answer with yes or no answers? Or... Sorry, old man. Where do they come up with the sounds for these things? Uh, the, the, the sounds are generated in the back by a group of musicians that we have. Hi, what's going on in here? What's your name? Hi, I'm Paul Heitch. I'm a sound designer here at Williams. And you're doing sounds for the games, right? Yes, yeah. Can you okay. tell us what game this is going to be for? No, I can't. Top secret? Yes. Let's have a hey. How angry? Pretty angry. Hey! That was very angry. Yeah. Watch those hands, Buster. So it's basically some guy, like, with his hands all over a woman. Watch those hands, Buster. Yeah, that's basically the mode. So this one isn't meant for the kids. It's not a family game. It's an operator adjustment. <laughs> okay. Whatever that means. Uh, well, that, that means the. Are you going to clean it up for the kids? Well, yeah. The operator has the, has the option of whether or not he has the the full blown sound package or the the PG. Or the really sound lascivious package. sound package. Right. She didn't do the voices for the Adams family, right? No, she didn't. Who, who did those? Raúl, Julia, and Angelica Houston did those voices. The real people. The real people. What's your name? John Tobias. And you are? Ed Boone. And these are video games. These are not uh, pinball, right? Correct. And these guys are going to sort of enact a, a fight scene, which is going to be relayed to the game itself? Right. These, uh, these fellas here play characters in the game. We take their images and we put them on film here, and then we transfer that to video images, and it turns out to end up what's on the game over there. Do you ever come, like, into a video arcade and sneak up behind somebody playing the game and say, that's me? And... Oh, well, actually, I was in an arcade, uh, and some guy turned to me and he goes, oh, you should play this game. It's pretty fun. And I was like, uh, why don't you take a look at it? You know, I am the game. I am the game. I am in the game. And the game is me. And the guy didn't even know. Everything you just saw is basically what you're going to be seeing here. Like, we'll pick the same two guys here. And these are the same two actors doing all the moves that we had uh, filmed and put them on tape. And that is... Uh... That was blood. Yeah, right. Lots of blood. This isn't really meant for kids, though, either, though, is it? Oh, uh, well, actually, it is. I mean, that's, that's the kind of uh, the stuff they've been playing right here. Oh, my God, he just ripped his heart out. Going into the catacombs yes, of the, uh, the uh, design area for pinball. This is a pinball game from uh, from the 30s. Yeah, from the early 1930s. And you're one of the designers. Yes, I am, and I'm testing out some new software on uh, on an old game. And I bet you don't even have to pay, do you? No, I never do, and that's probably one of the best things about working here. 
Okay, can I play a ball here? Sure, go right ahead. Oh, good. Okay. Are the flippers always the same distance apart? No, they're not. Oh, that was see, I think you need a little more flipper there. <laughs> no. It always seems to go down that alleyway for me. Well, if it never went down there, then you'd never stop playing, right? True, and I'd never get an education and, and right. have a job. Right. If somebody wants to put one of these pinball machines in their home or business, what do they do? Just check with the distributor in the area, uh, look in the yellow pages under vending machines or amusement equipment and go for it. Okay.